So we began working at uh, 2001. Um, as I said, most of us Israeli Jews, some of us Palestinians, uh, but citizens from Israel, uh, not from the West Bank. We have connections with Palestinians in other places, but we work mostly here in Israel because we uh, try to raise awareness to the Nakba um, uh, from 1948, and of course the Nakba is you know, the territory that the Jewish state was founded. Uh, so we work within, the, within Israel and uh, try to bring this issue of the Nakba, the history, the geography, the testimonies to, to Israel, Israeli Jews mainly. Uh, as we as Israelis, we know very little, if anything, about the Nakba, and um, we believe that knowing it is first step in order to acknowledge, because it's not exactly the same to know and to acknowledge. Um, and acknowledgement or responsibility uh, we, we, as, that we as Israelis should take um, includes many things. Uh, it's not only acknowledgement as a statement or a, I don't know, saying yes, okay, the Nakba happened and we have some, some responsibility. This is perhaps important, but it's not enough. We should uh, do things. Um, and we try as a whole to to do some some projects, different projects to, that acknowledges the Nakba, um, and the, and also we um, part of this acknowledgement is the recognition of the right of return of the Palestinian refugees, which we supported and uh, have a special project on that, which is one of the projects I, I I will explain about. Um, so we, we have several projects that we do. So one I mentioned is the, the tours that we do to uh, destroyed places for 1948. Um, and you have to understand that, as I said, that we don't know. It's not just kind of a metaphor. You know, it's not it's not like that. You know, if I I can give an example, uh, this Birwe village that we are going to visit in a few days. Uh, just a year or a little more than that came here to this office uh, one young person, I think he's 22, 23, Israeli, and he told me that uh, he's looking for information about El Biru. And we have a library and information center. We, we provide information to, to mainly Israelis who come here to study about this issue. And he told me that he was born in a kibbutz named Yasul. And the kibbutz is on the lands of Birwe. Uh, it's not exactly the center of the kibbutz, uh, where was the center of the village, but the kibbutz uses a uh, part of the lands of Birwe. And he told me that he only very recently, a few months before he came here, he knew that Birwe was the Palestinian village. He never heard about it before. He told me that he knew the name always, and Birwe is the name, he told me, of um, uh, some parts, some lands around the kibbutz, and the area, they, they always remember, as a child, they called this area El Birwe, but he never knew what's this, you know. He, okay, he, I guess he thought it's some Arabic, has to do with Arabs or something, because it sounds Arabic word, but he never knew that this refers to a village that was there. Um, so Israelis really don't know. It's not just a metaphor saying that we don't know about that. But I also did kind of this exact personal private story in my place, the place I grew up in Israel. And, uh, um, and, and even if we know something usually, people s might know something, like there was a village there, but this is about that. I mean, we don't know much more than that. So we don't know how these people lived there and what did they do, why did they live from, you know, in 1848, what happened there, where are they today, what do they want, etc. We know almost nothing about it. Now, these recent years, uh, I would say very much this last year, one or two years, the Nakba became something that in Israel it's been all the time in the media. It's really, the last month, it's really amazing what's happening now. It's like there is no one single day without mentioning the Nakba or using the term Nakba in the media in Israel. But in many ways, I would say that it's mostly 
even today, Israelis don't exactly understand what does it mean. Because so many people in Israel think that the Nakba in Arabic means it's the, the word for the Israel independence. <laughs> or the Israeli foundation day. Because they say, ah, in Nakba, ah, yes, the Nakba day, yes, the Israel independence day, so it's the Nakba day, so, okay. The, and Israel don't understand that the Nakba, and I have, you know, sometimes arguments with people, that, and they try to explain, and sometimes they don't want to listen, because for them, it's better to say that it's kind of incitement against Israel, or against Israel, it's, you know, as such, you know, it's, their independence is, is the Nakba. And I will explain, no, Nakba is a tragedy or catastrophe, people were expelled, became refugees, and this, may, uh, very few people, okay, now I would say more Israelis know, but even this, okay, they know the title, some might know what does it mean, that's about that. More, uh, m most of the people know very, very little about it, even, as I said, even though the word itself has been used a lot recently. Uh, and in many cases also in very, f I mean, twisted ways or in funny ways, just some one or two years ago, there was a scandal about the fans of a basketball team, Apollo Tel Aviv. It's a very famous team in Tel Aviv. The fans are very, you know, uh, they love very much their team and they are very known for that. And uh, there was a big scandal when the mayor of the city of Tel Aviv decided to destroy and he implemented it, destroyed their historical. Um, uh, stadium, basketball stadium, okay, the whole you know, that they played. Because it's not in a good area, with the mayor of Photo, the planners of the city. So it was a whole scandal when they destroyed it, and one of the fans, a very famous guy, he was in, in video and he said, This is the Nakba day of the, the fans of a Porto wow. Aviv basketball. <laughs> yeah, he used it. And, uh, so sometimes they use it in kind of funny or other. Because, and he used it because he said it's our big tragedy, you know, like, uh, and they always remember it since then. Uh, not the Nakba, but the uh, destruction of the... <laughs> so in a way, the memory of uh, Usishkin destruction, Usishkin was the name of... Uh, it's funny that Usishkin, the name of the stadium, is also a famous uh, Zionist, purchases a lot of uh, lands, and uh, so it has to do with the Nakba, in a way, also. Um, so, as I said, the Israelis know very little about it, and we, we, so we organize tours to those places, and in these tours we, um, uh, we listen to testimonies from Palestinians, always from Palestinian refugees, telling us the story of the place before the Nakba, during the Nakba, since then. Um, sometimes we have some luck to have some Jews telling us something about it. It's very unusual, but some, in some cases, some rare cases, also Jews has some memories that has to do with the place. Like, for example, uh, people who, who conquered those places. We had a very interesting, we have a very interesting testimony, you can see it on our website, of one of the soldiers that took over and that conquered the uh, Be'er Sheva, Be'er Saba, in, in the south of Israel today. And he tells them how he, what, what's happened, and how they did it, and yeah, it's very, not easy to listen to what he says, but it's very interesting. Uh, but it's very unusual. Usually, it's Palestinians tell their story, um, and uh, for us as Israel, it's very, very uh, unique opportunity to, to have, you know, physically stand there in those places that, as I said, we don't know them usually, um, and to listen to someone's story about the place. Um, and also we, 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 this, we um, produce booklets about those places, so we have these booklets like in, in every place that, that we organize these tours, so we have these booklets in Hebrew and Arabic, uh, with testimonies from uh, Palestinians from those places and other materials, photos and maps. Um, in, during these tours we also post signs, like in this photo, so I'm sure you can see it, we, we post signs to indicate the place or the, the sites, the different sites of the village. So like the schoolhouse of the village or where was the mosque standing. So we post signs to indicate the existence of those places. Usually these signs been removed, uh, are removed very quickly or very, uh, after we post them. Until today we post, I don't know, more than 
years, 200 signs. They've all been removed, uh, sometimes minutes after we post them. Even if they are in remote places, some, because we publish it and uh, some people go and remove the signs. Uh, Israelis, for Israelis, it's not only that most of Israelis don't want to know, don't know, but I would say that also most of Israelis don't want to know about it. And uh, it's still in history that uh, unfortunately most of Israelis feel like threatened, threatened by, by knowing it, you know, or acknowledging it. Um, um, so this is about the tours that we do. We, we have another project that is a education project. And this, this is a folder we produced, um, um, like 400 copies of such a folder. Uh, it's in Hebrew. It's a kind of a study guide to teach the Nakba in high schools and universities. The title is, how do you say Nakba in Hebrew?